first off four, like three fifths of the game are good. Three acts are good. One, two, and four. Act three stinks, because you literally follow a guy around a town, do a vehicle segment in a boss fight, and then the long cutscenes. Act four after that? Revisiting the place in Metal Gear Solid 1? It was actually pretty fucking good. And yeah. some great boss fights in the the Metal Gear fight? Yo! That Metal Gear fight was definitely the highlight. That was of the sick! Game. That was sick! That Metal Gear highlight was was definitely the highlight of the game. Dude, I was so hyped going through that. That was amazing. Yeah. Say so you had to get through that fucking annoying ass vamp fight before that. Yeah, the vamp fight fucking sucks, but. Took me forever to figure out how to kill him. I remember watching my brother go through that fight, and that was just a fucking. After you knock it down five times, it's like, oh, I got it! Use the fucking <laughs> syringe! The description did say you could stick people up with it. What the fuck, though? <laughs> what the fuck? And you had to do it the right angle, too. You also had to do it weird, but... And then chapter five, you have one big sneaky segment, then a boss, then the segment, and then the physical fight you have at the end of the game, and then cutscenes galore. Yeah. Acts one, two, and four were fine. Three was okay. Three just seemed kind of boring. Five just... The sneaky segment was brutal. But then the rest of the... And then... And then just the rest of the chapters led to the end. It's like, they literally just... Chapter 5 felt like it was tacked on. The story overtook so much of 5. Yeah. Like, man. At least it sounds like Solid 5 tried to reverse that a little bit. I think Solid 5 also... Uh, they did have a lot of cutscenes, but there was also a lot of gameplay to go through, The so. problem is that the gameplay also felt less like a Metal Gear Solid game and more like... Yeah, it wasn't as much sneaking as much as it was the It wasn't a linear stealth game so much as it is, like... The open world exploration. Yeah. I'm sure there was some stealth, but not a lot. Yeah, win throughout most of the stages. This is a tough one, too. But yeah, like, that's the big problem with 5, is that it's not really a Metal Gear, as much of a Metal Gear Solid game, which is kind of the reason why I don't think. Well, anything I say about Rising, but... At least Rising I'd be willing to play as it continues a story on from 4. Yeah. Sounds like I might be willing to go through Peace Walker. So I'm sure, that, that one sounds fine. Peace Walker I've heard good things about. I think you can go through that whole game without killing anybody, as well. Like, actually killing anybody. Man, I imagine that game's smaller than the other solid entries. Yeah, it's a PSP game, so... It's at least shorter than frickin' 2 and 3, probably. It's probably more 1's length. Yeah, all those games are relatively short, but yeah. Too many cutscenes can definitely ruin a game. And well, I would I would prefer character development over story development. I'll say that. Yeah, same here. If you're gonna focus on the story, helping the build the character, that's a lot better. That's why Xenoblade Chronicles worked out well. Most of the story the elements are building the characters and their That's knowledge. why I'm the biggest fan of 2 amongst all the games. That did have a lot of great character development. Because that one, that game specifically, when it came to its character development, I felt like it was the strongest. Other than a couple awkward scenes. But There's yes. a couple awkward scenes, <laughs> yeah. but I'm willing to put up with it. It probably was the worst with that, but otherwise, yeah, the rest of it was pretty good. Yeah, because when I look at it from 1 and 3's perspective, it's like, 1, I think, has the best overall narrative when it comes to, like... Yeah. Just the, like, overall setting and tone. Two had the best character in Bellman, except for Marag. She was just there. Yeah. Three kind of had a lot of weirdness. There were a lot of characters to go over. Some of it felt a little... eh. At least the main cast, there was a lot of good character development. I like the main dynamics going on with most of the cast. The a lot of the other side characters, though, a little except less so. Except for, um... Noah. He got a little better towards the end, but yeah. Well, once you got to chapter six, you got to see the twist. Yeah, but the problem is, like, that's the, like, major time when he... Oh god, this one's running at you! <laughs> god damn it. Yeah, they added hair, Roselle just run straight at you. So yeah, he doesn't just march back and forth, he'll actually run at you. Fun. <laughs> but yeah, he was the only one of the main crew, it was kinda eh. Although, you know, the twist made it a little better. It was like That's some garbage and it didn't fucking kill the piranha plant. Yeah, the piranha plants are a little finicky with a group of shells. And again, that's another reason why I'm not the biggest fan of Galaxy 1. Everybody loves Galaxy 1 because of 
the amazing story for a Mario game. And Rosalina being there, so cool. I'm just like, I mean, it's there. It adds a little more scope, sure. But I play Galaxy 2, I'm like, this blows Galaxy 1 out of the water, man. <laughs> Galaxy 1's still good, but going to 2, I'm just like, I'd rather play Galaxy 2 over 1 any day. Same here. Then again, that's just me, because I'd rather just have a focused gameplay loop. I don't fucking care how good your characters are. I also think Rosalina's character development is kind of not great. She, she It's not did, great. She did some stupid thing as a child and then fucking got left out of space out of her family. She's like, you know what? I'm just gonna watch over these guys now. That was it! Everybody treats her like the saddest fucking thing. Like, she's one of the greatest characters. Like, she got powers from Hannibal Lewis because she forgot about her own fucking family. Yeah. Like, the fuck? <laughs> Spoiler warning! <laughs> He's nearly 20 years old, guys. Come on. Alright, well, this leads to a warp. We can always rewind. Well, let's find out. It could lead you forward to the level. <clears throat> Which it might have. It's always nice to check the warp pipes, though. Oh, uh, he has an extra life could have been had there. Oh, well. Ooh! That was just warp. No, maybe not. <laughs> to another bonus zone! Okay. What the fuck? Where am I going? I don't like this. Oh, it took you to a side area to then get here. Ooh, nice. So what? Oh, that's fun! You don't need to use the bullet bill, but it's nice and helpful. Well, well I found my way through. That's all I that <laughs> It was kind of a longer route, but you know what? It it, it, was it got safer. you through. Yeah, fuck it. It got you through. Man, that's it's why people make question why I say that Mario Galaxy is one of my least favorite 3D Mario games. Like, yeah, the scope of the story was, I guess, a nice different change of pace. And it was still better than Sunshine's story. And I still put Galaxy above Sunshine. <laughs> Who won? Oh, you weirdos. Yeah, you want to stay on that platform? Might be another one to hit the warp pipe again. Because I think it loops. But you could also use it to keep getting mushrooms if you really wanted to do that. Or mushroom to a fire flower. So it was an option available to you. But now we have Lakitu's. And while since we've seen you fuckers. But yeah, I'll still take the story in Galaxy over Sunshine any day. Cause, well... Well, the, sun, the story of Sunshine wasn't actually bad. It's just, once Bowser showed back up in the end game, I was just like, really? Really? They just threw Bowser back in out of fucking nowhere? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just don't like the story, because all I can think about is just, I don't want to help any of you piano fuckers, I just want you all dead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fuck you! I'll just leave you on fire. <laughs> Watching him for three hours. How is this man not melt? He's on fire, he won't die! Well, did you know, they're immune to fire. It's just an inconvenience for them. <laughs> They'll live. Apparently, they live all the time anyway. Yup! Right. I forgot when that actually kicked in. Not like it matters, I come back at the beginning of the stage anyway. One of those stages don't have a checkpoint, because fuck you. Oh uh, yeah, this might be the last world stage that actually has checkpoints. I think World 8 onward. World 8 onward, no more checkpoints! So anytime you die, you gotta start from the beginning of the stage. Oh, and I think the next level you're really gonna fucking hate. Because it involves a mechanic you fucking hate in this game. Invisible blocks. Another one. Wind. Another one. Something that shoots you off screen. You'll remember when you see them. Yeah, that's... You'll remember, it's probably a stage you probably... You'll know what stage it is. As soon as you see it, you'll be like, Oh no, it's this stage. Fuck you! 
And again, at least all the 2D Mario games have a very simple story. None of them really expand on too much of anything. Some people would complain like, oh, they have been reusing the same shit over and over again for God knows Hey, what years. fucking basic 2D platformer has a fucking, like, intense story? I can't really think of one. Sonic? It's honestly the most intense of a story I think has gotten in a comfortable platformer. I guess you can go with the handheld ones, probably. Yeah, that's probably more so advanced and rush. Yeah, I'd argue even, um... Like, three and knuckles. Yeah. Well, at least it's not, like, a bunch of cutscenes galore. Three and knuckles just had, like, little tidbits here and there. It would never be, like, a large cutscene or anything. I bring it up because, I mean... I mean, yeah, you're right. Kind of. You're right. <clears throat> it definitely was one of the better executions of doing a story in a 2D platformer. Like, it doesn't need dialogue. You just, you see things happen, you get the context of the situation, most likely. Like, it, it's short but sweet. It gives you context. So, it makes you understand why the gameplay is there the way it is, without being, like, in your face. You can also choose to fucking ignore it. <laughs> that also helps. It's also just there, and then once it's gone, you're like, well... That happened. Why do I keep thinking of Rayman 1 again? God damn it! The story of that wasn't even that intensive! Things got kidnapped, and you had to go rescue all of them. I mean, that Dark Souls where it's just like, oh, the entire environment does it. It's like, well... I don't give a shit about how great the world was back then. That is an example of the opposite being true for not telling enough story to make it kind of weird. Because there are some gameplay elements that the story or lore may lead you to, but they hide it very well. Hmm. So maybe if, it's just because if you don't dig deep enough, you may have trouble being able to uncover some things in a game. I guess maybe it's just because my brain just defaults to why the fuck should I care about what the world was like before when everything's already dead. Yeah, it, it that's all depends. A, but that, I, maybe that's just my personal preference. I mean, we do go through all the scan logs in the Prime Trilogy. That's true. And it's bad, I guess it's also because... At least that's just, you can scan it and read it on your own. It's not like you're fucking, like, forced to read it to, you know, actually play through the game. I mean, you're not forced to read it in Dark Souls, I don't think. Oh, unless you're saying, like, go beyond the realms of the game. Itself. Like, sometimes you need to look at the lore to know you need a certain item to fucking, like, activate a certain boss or something. I think that's something in one of their games, like, the lore, yeah. like, reading deep the lore would tell you, like, there's an item you have to do something with to, like, get to the true end game or whatever. I guess someone argue, well, that's, like, the point of the game already going. I guess. Not paying attention. Well, now, yeah, now I think about it, Metroid Prime Hunters did that, too. All the hints on those doors you had to read to get an order for a thing to unlock the last phase of the final boss. Hey, I think it's one of the reasons people don't really like Prime Hunters. Among other reasons. It's also awkward. The same way Kid Icarus Uprising is awkward, but probably worse. Doesn't help when that game is literally just... Here, grab MacGuffin from this planet and rather rinse for pizza. Oh! Yeah, literally just... Here, go to this planet, do some shit. Get the three MacGuffins, go fight the boss, get its MacGuffin, escape the planet, do that seven more times. Okay, now you can go to the last boss. Alright. Yeah, like, it doesn't feel... natural. I mean, it's not the worst Metroid game I played. And part of me would rather play that than the other end. Although I will admit it's close between those two. I can at least acknowledge other M for certain points. It's other, it's there's it's other problems it's, other M has to be It's finished. gameplay is probably better, but... Well, other M shows would have to be throw too much story and try to do for character development on a character that didn't really need it! Or at least not the way they did it. Yeah. They tried to take the idea of her failing Super Metroid and have it ruin her confidence, and they took it way too far. You took from what should have been a blemish to make her kind of, like, doubt herself to make her lose confidence in, like, all of her abilities and everything she's done. It's like... Especially considering it's like, this is the third game she's done this in, so for her to kind of still be shaken up after all this like, time... Like, it... It was a decent idea, but they... They pushed it too far, is what yeah. they did. They tried to make her look too weak. 
Otherwise, you'd be building up a lot more if that was what you wanted to do. And, well, that's what the main game's supposed to be about, but... The fact she had all of her abilities, and it's just... Nah, I was told not to use them, so I'm not gonna use them. The fuck are you talking about? Ugh. Oh, that fucking Adam. God damn it. It makes... I mean, it does make sense, but... Okay, it is, it's just, it went too far. They tried to go too far to fucking make her doubt herself, and it just, it ruined parts of the gameplay because of it, and the story got stupid because of it. It also didn't help that it also introduced some of the Western tropes as well, such as being stuck to do quote-unquote cutscene gameplay things. Or the walking cutscenes were not great in other M. Yeah, I'll admit, those were pretty bad too. Favorite's the one where you're in the met in the chamber where all the fucking Metroids were. It cut goes back from cutscene to you walking. To cutscene to you walking. Cutscene to you walking. It's like Ugh! It's so dumb! Well that was probably Team Ninja their worst. Yeah. Anyway, they've been a lot better about games like that since. If the Neo series is anything to go wait, that's Ninja Theory, isn't it? No, it's Team Ninja. Okay, yeah. If Neo is anything to go by. Hmm, you know? That is arguably the worst game that friggin' Team Ninja has done. No, they've done worse. Oh? Ninja Gaiden 3. Ah! Oh, <laughs> fair point! <laughs> How would you like a game to basically <laughs> just strip... Try to uh, strip all the cool factor over each <coughs> time? Like, oh, you wanna know something more fun about Ninja Gaiden 3? Oh no! You wanna know all those nice, cool weapons that you played in? In, um... 1 and 2? Yep. All those awesome, the amount of awesome weapons in that game. You want to know how many weapons you had in Ninja Gaiden 3? Two? One. Just the fucking ninja sword? Or yep. Dragon sword? And you want to know what happened with all the fun, cool weapons that, um, uh, Ninja um, Ryu had in Ninja Gaiden? DLC! Oh! Wow. There's Razor's Edge, which fixed that problem. They probably include all that, thank God. Yeah, but then they also Ooh. did a bunch of the stupid um, walking simulator bullshit. Oh. That's not a game that should have that. Metroid, I can understand it to a point, because kind of like the suspense of not knowing what's in a room could be something. But Ninja There's Gaiden... a lot of stupid things about Ninja Gaiden 3. Mm. Then again, that's not, the one, that's not one of the ones that Igaki worked on. Nope. That was Hayashi, and people love, and there are some diehard fans that love drilling home the fact of how incompetent he was because he fucked up Ninja Gaiden. I imagine he's not with Team Ninja anymore. No, he still is. Oh. Huh. He's just making different games. He learned his lesson. There was another person that also was part of the games as well. I forget the dude's name, but because of him, he's the one that basically was like, oh yeah, we fucked up. Some people respect him more than what's his face for obvious reason because one of them basically fucked up a series. And the other one was willing to see what got it fucked up and try to go back to what worked for the most part. The problem is though now that Ninja Guy is basically dead because the yeah. Master Collection didn't do so well because they didn't have the good games. They didn't have the good games and from what I heard the performance wasn't that great. I could just be thinking of the Switch version, but I don't think the performance was that good on any version. It wasn't like... I guess I should say it wasn't superior. It wasn't a superior experience, to put it that way. Yeah. Like, it worked, and it also didn't, didn't help they didn't get the right games, either. I mean... Ooh. Fuck. Oh, wait, you're fine. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna like... jump off him. Oh! That's fine! I was gonna say, oh, that was, yeah, that was, that was a hard moment to read. Fuck! It was, the end was right there! But yeah, Ninja Gaiden 3, that is Team Ninja's crappiest game. Their coup de crap. Yep, <laughs> that's their coup de crap. <laughs> oh, God. I say what you call about Metroid and other M. At least the gameplay's competent. Yep, it's competently designed. Stupid in other places, but the whole development aspect of some of the powers is kind of dumb. Yeah. Especially when you're so used to the game telling you when you get abilities, and then then you don't. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, that was so dumb. It, it would have been fine even if, like, you died the first time. There was like, maybe you should try dropping a power bomb. That'd be like, ha ha! But nope, you didn't even get that. You didn't even get that acknowledgement. You just get thrown back in there and have to keep trying until you figure that Until you out. realize that you can actually do it without the game really telling you. The one time they do that, so dumb! God damn it! Well, there's still also the fucking the narrative one, the fucking... I wonder about this lava area without the various suit. Samus, what the fuck are you doing? Put on the various suit! At least in defense of that game for the Japanese version, it makes more sense, but the problem is with how it translated to, and apparently that's how Sakamoto wanted to tra The fact that that's how Sakamoto wanted to translate is the thing that kind of yeah. gets me more. It said we just got, you just got up there, and then Adam was like, Samus, put on your various suit. No, it's like, no, we have authorization to put on the various suit. It's like, why say it like that? You can still make it! Ew! <laughs> Finally! Ooh, that was a rough one. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of that problem in that game. Gotta love it when narrative fucking controls the powers you have. 